Okay, so for this fourth proof, we have if the diagonals of a parallelogram are equal and intersect at right angles, then the parallelogram is a square. So we're given here parallelogram PIKC, okay, or PCKI, okay, with diagonals IC and PK being congruent to each other. So that must mean, okay, so they have congruent diagonals, okay, and they meet at point E. So the congruent diagonals meet at point E, and also, uh, they are perpendicular to each other. And we have to prove that this parallelogram is a square. So how do we do that? So this is the proof regarding the square. But this time, we need to prove that a given shape, which is a rhombus, okay, is a square. So can we, we can write here the first one, our given. Okay, so our, for our givens, we have here um, diagonals uh, IC and PK are congruent and perpendicular to each other okay so they are perpendicular perpendicular to each other the diagonals okay so the reason for that okay the reason for that is simply given those are our given information so for number two what statement can we write okay so for our second statement we can write here guys that Okay, number two, since we have here the diagonals are congruent and are perpendicular to each other, we can say that the line segments PE and EK are congruent. And also we can say that IE and CE are congruent because what, what uh, property do par parallelograms have? So they have the specific property, the ones that we have also discussed in our previous slides. Okay, so we can say here that the that the uh, diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So that means the segments that they created, the two segments that they created when they bisect each other are congruent or the same. Okay, so P is congruent to EK and IE is congruent to CE. And we can also say, okay, we can also say here that angles PE, angles PEC and IEK measure okay so i'm sorry just pec first so angle pec is a right angle okay so angle pec is a right angle and the reason for that is simply definition of perpendicularity definition of perpendicularity where did this come from okay so it came from statement number one so if we have two diagonals that are perpendicular therefore we have a right angle and if angles if angle pec is a right angle therefore it measures 90 degrees and therefore angles iek okay angle iek it, it follows that angle iek okay angle iek uh, measures also measures 90 degrees also using the vertical angle theorem because PEC and IE angles PEC and IEK are vertical angles and therefore we can write here at number five okay we can write oh, I'm sorry we can write here at number five that okay we can write here at number five that triangles okay triangles PEC and IEK are congruent using the SAS okay SAS triangle congruence postulate triangle congruence postulate okay so that can be our fifth statement right here okay so what can be our sixth statement okay so for this proof we can also mesh uh, we can also mention that for num number six we have your angles PEI and IEK are right angles okay so the simple reason for that would be the definition of perpendicularity okay and we can also say we can use the SAS triangle congruence uh, postulate another time uh, another uh, uh, again repeated okay so we can use for number seven we can write that IE is congruent to segment IE so the reason for that is simply the reflexive okay, reflexive property of congruence Okay, so IE is congruent to IE. And then, okay, so now using the SAS try another time, using the SAS triangle congruence postulate, so we have your PE is congruent to EK, okay, and IE is congruent to itself, 
okay and also we have here PEI and IEKR right angles so they therefore they are congruent okay because that's the definition of perpendicularity therefore we can write here for statement number eight okay that triangles okay triangles PEI and uh, uh, IEK are congruent okay you using also the SAS triangle congruence postulate and for our ninth statement here we can say okay, so let's try to erase the markings okay so we can okay we can say okay we can okay there you go we have erased so we can say here for number nine okay we can see here that for number that that ik is congruent to ip using cpctc because you've uh, said that uh, PEI is congruent to IEK. Okay, so uh, CP, CP, C. And from here, okay, we can say, okay, we can say that, okay, we can say here for number 10, okay, that PC and IK are congruent and PI and CK are congruent. Okay, so uh, that's the definition of parallelogram. Uh, the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So for number 10, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. And therefore, we can say here, lastly, for number 11, okay, for number 11, that this parallelogram has four congruent sides. So PC, CK, IK, and PI are congruent sides. So they all congru they are all congruent using the substitution property of equality. Okay, because we've said here that IK is congruent to IP. Okay, so therefore all of these angles are congruent using the no not the substitution but the transitive. Okay, so let's write that transitive transitive property of congruence. Okay. So for our 12 statement, we can say here that side se uh, line segment uh, for our number, okay, number 12, we can say here on number 12 that IK is congruent to IK using the reflexive property of congruence. Okay, so now after we've proven that uh, two pairs of triangles are congruent, we have to prove the third triangle. Okay, so we have here triangles PIK and CKI. Okay, so now that we've stated that, we can say here for number 13 that triangles, okay, triangles PIK and CKI are congruent to each other using the CPCTC or the congruent parts of congruent tri- uh, No, no, no. Using the SSS or the side-side-side triangle congruence postulate. Okay, so there you go. Because we've said here that IK is congruent to itself. Okay, so, and the diagonals are congruent. And also, these opposite sides are also congruent. Okay, so, therefore, okay, so we can also sta state here for number 14 that angles PIK and CKI are, are congruent through CPCTC. Congruent using CPCTC. Or congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, for number 15, okay, for number 15, we can write, okay, we can write here for number 15 that the measure is that the measure of angle PIK, okay, measure of angle PIK plus the measure of angle CKI is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so the reason for that, if you notice guys, we have here two parallel lines since this is a parallelogram and we have here our transversal. Therefore, the same side, okay, the same side interior angles PIK, okay, PIK and, okay, so this is the diagonal PIK, okay, PIK and CKI, okay, so they are on the same side, so that must mean they are supplementary angles. So we can write here, okay, uh, interior angles of uh, uh, lying 
on the same side of parallel lines cut by a transversal or supplementary. Okay. And also, we can say here on number 16, okay, since uh, angle PIK is congruent to angle CKI, therefore, we can substitute here angle PIK. And we can create a new equation here. Number 16, measure of angle PIK or measure, measure of 2 times the angle of PIK. Okay, measure of 2 times PIK is equal to 180 degrees. Using the substitution, a substitution property of equality. Okay, and therefore, using the division property of equality, we can state here for number 17 that the measure of angle PIK is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, is equal to 9 is equal to 90 degrees okay and the reason for that for number 17 is the division property property of equality okay so we have our statements here okay so we have here our statements and our proofs okay 16 and 17 now that we know that pik measures 90 degrees therefore angle cki must also measure okay must also measure 90 degrees okay so there you go so um 18 uh, measure of angle cki is also 90 degrees so the reason for that is uh-huh also substitution okay so we can also say that the measure of the four angles here okay so the measure of the four angles we can write here okay for number 19 okay number 19 we can write here that uh, measures of angles uh, IPC PCK CKI and KIP are 90 degrees so they're all 90 degrees okay because we can write here the property of a parallelogram so the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent okay so there you go okay and then lastly we can now say for our 20th statement that parallelogram okay so parallelogram parallelogram pcki is a square okay so the reason for that is we've already proven here that this parallelogram a parallel a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and okay four congruent sides okay and four right angles okay so there you go so that's the end of our proof here for this problem okay so for our next problem we're going to use the diagonal of a square okay to find the area of the small square inside of the snowflake Okay, so if you remember guys also using the Pythagorean theorem, if we have here a side measurement of a square that measures 1, therefore the diagonal of the square must measure square root of 2. Or in other words, if the side measurement of the square is equal to s, then the, the diagonal must measure s square root of 2. Okay, so let's try, the, some, uh, let's try this word problem. So given that the small square at the center of, has a diagonal uh, that measures 92 micrometers inside of that snowflake so there's a snowflake there and there's a central square there that has a diagonal it has a diagonal of 92 micrometers okay so we write that as mu and the diagonal of the larger square is double than that of the uh, smaller square okay so the, the diagonal of the larger square is going to be 92 times 2 so that's going to be 181 nanometers i'm sorry micrometers okay so uh we want to find the okay we want to find the areas of the smaller and the larger squares of the snowflake so how do we do that okay so given that we don't know we don't know the side measurement okay we only know the diagonals so the the diagonal one first diagonal is for the small square and the second diagonal the bigger one is for the big square 